Okay, I'm actually so impressed with myself. Today we're gonna look back on all of the predictions I had for makeup for 2022. And it's funny, when I, I've had this video on my calendar to do, and when I sat down to get the list compiled from my predictions video last year, in my head, I was like, I actually don't think that many of these happened. Uh, but then when I was going over my list, I was like, wait, actually almost every single one of them happened. Welcome back to Vlogmas. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm doing five long form videos, Monday through Friday, like one every day. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing shorts all throughout the month of December. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And let's talk about my predictions. So I've been doing this series for a few years now, just doing my makeup predictions of the year, and I will be doing a 2023 version. Though I did mention in my last Q&A that I don't feel super confident making that predictions video for next year, just because I don't feel like I've been as in tune with makeup launches this year. Last year, I was always like watching the trend mood page, watching all of the new makeup releases, really keeping up with all of that, but I haven't done that as much in 2022, so I don't feel as equipped to predict for 2023. That being said, I'm gonna do my research, do some prepping, and I'll give you my best guesses later on this month. All right, so let's talk about what I thought we would see this year. So first in the video, I talked more generally just in terms of trends that I thought we would see. I started off by saying I thought French tips were gonna be huge and I feel like that has been true. We have seen this everywhere. And I will say in general, a French tip manicure has always been a classic style for nails, but I do feel like the popularity of it faded out for a bit there. And then we had this huge revival in 2022 of maybe like a colorful French tip nail or even just more of your classic regular white tip French tip nail. I also said I thought matte skin would be big. This one I would say we saw a little bit, but maybe not as much as I was anticipating. I could still see this one continuing to gain some popularity leading into 2023. And specifically, the reason I thought this would trend was because we notice trend cycles to be so cyclical. So it's like a pendulum almost because super dewy skin was so big, inevitably, next we're gonna see super matte skin at some point. So I feel like it's really always swinging back and forth, which is why I still feel like matte skin, even if it hasn't had its full peak moment, I still think that's coming. I also said we would see like the everyday smoky eye. And I kind of defined this as like a simple gray wing or a brown wing, um, matte brown eyes. I definitely think we saw this, but what I would say we saw even more was less of the everyday smoky eye and more of the grunge look. I feel like grungy, messy, early 2000s, late 90s makeup had a very big moment, bigger than I was expecting this year because I thought it would still be more of the like soft matte natural smoky eye, which we did see, but I think like the grunge eyeshadow took on an even bigger trend. I also said the side part was coming back. I mean, look at me today. I'm kind of not really even an actual part, just kind of, I don't know, flipped over, but the side part is coming back. I, it's, it's been coming back again. It's a pendulum. When I was growing up, I am, I'm 29, and when I was growing up, that was the era of the side part, and I remember in like elementary and middle school, it was like embarrassing to be wearing a middle part. You're like, why are you wearing a middle part? You should be wearing a side part, which is how I feel Gen Z talks about the side part, where to them it's like the opposite. They're like, why are you wearing a middle part? That's embarrassing. A center part is more flattering. It just goes back and forth every few years or every decade, whatever it is. One inevitably becomes more trendy and then we'll see the other one and then it's gonna go back. I feel like they're both flattering. They both have a time and a place. I'm not like really anti one part to very pro another. I think so much of it comes down to your face shape, but the biggest pro for a side part is the volume. Like you can just get so much more when your hair is parted on the side. So it's a different look. I think it is coming back, though I won't say it's like, again, it hasn't hit its peak yet. I think that one's gonna spill over into 2023 and beyond. I also said brown hair, which sounds so vague. You're like, girl, what do you mean brown hair? But I elaborated more in the video. This was one that really started trending even before this point, but we've noticed 
a big boom in um, brown hair as a trendy hair color. A lot of famous celebrities known for having blonde hair dyed their hair brown in 2021. I'm talking like Gigi Hadid, Hailey Bieber, and this one I still think brown hair and different like tones of brown were popular in 2022, but I did not predict red slash ginger hair to be the hot hair color of 2022. That took me by surprise, but I feel like everyone, and I'm exaggerating here, but I do feel like everyone went red this year. I was seeing it on every celebrity, every influencer, and I even remember getting my hair done recently and asking the stylist, like, do you feel like more people have asked you for red hair this year than ever before? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. Um, another trend I predicted that, you know, was a bit vague, but I do feel that we saw was less Photoshop in advertising. This is another one. I think this just is the future. We're going to continue to see this, but more real skin. I've seen so many campaigns this year that feature skincare products on models with acne, and I'm, it makes me so happy as someone that has struggled with acne pretty much my whole life. I love to see that. I love seeing real texture on someone's skin. I still think there is a long ways to go because a lot of times we're even seeing texture that's photoshopped back in to be still somewhat perfect, but still show texture. Like there is a ways to go, but we have seen a really big shift in makeup advertising to showcase something that's a lot more realistic than we were seeing a decade ago. Okay, those were the general trends I was anticipating. Let's talk about some collabs. This is where I failed, okay? I predicted some very hyper-specific collaborations and we really didn't see any of these, but I think they would have been really cool if we did, okay? So part of the reason I picked these very specific collabs is because we've seen for the last few years that makeup brands want to collab with any type of IP. Like that has been the direction for a few years now. So I had a feeling we would keep seeing it in 2022, and I made some specific predictions that we didn't actually see. So first of all, I said, and I still think this would have been so cool, but I know like logistically it would have been complicated to do, but I still want to see a ColourPop Broadway collab. Something very similar to what we saw with their NBA collab, where they did separate palettes for different NBA teams. I wanted to see quads or nine pan palettes associated with different Broadway shows. I thought this would have been a perfect collaboration in 2022 when Broadway was really just starting to open back up. I was picturing like a Phantom of the Opera palette, very like black and white themed, maybe a red punch in there, which uh, you guys, Phantom is about to close on Broadway in New York City, which I haven't seen it yet and I, I still need to, but I was also picturing a Hamilton palette, a Wicked palette with a ton of greens, like Funny Girl, since Funny Girl just came back to Broadway. This could have been so cool and maybe this is just like the musical theater nerd in me being like, this is such a cool collab and I don't know if anyone else would actually be as excited about it, but I, I still want that. I also specifically mentioned Makeup Revolution because they love a collab. And we've noticed a lot of these brands have been collaborating with very nostalgic movies, shows, like 90s, early 2000s vibes. So I specifically said I thought maybe they would do like a Hey Arnold collab that would have been so cute or even Fairly Odd Parents with like, can you picture it now? You would have the separate palettes, like a green one, a, a, a pink one. That could have been really cool. That didn't happen, but I wish it did. Uh, if I'm overlooking like an indie brand that did a collab with one of these, let me know down below. I also said we'd see more celebrity brands, which we did, but I predicted three celebrities, which we did not see. I said Britney Spears because she had posted something that almost alluded to a makeup brand, though that did not happen. I also said Katy Perry just because she had been the spokesperson for CoverGirl for a while there. And I, I feel like I could see a brand from her. We did not see that. I also said one that I wanted to see, though I don't realistically think we will see, but Beyonce. If Beyonce had a makeup brand, I would, I would want to buy everything. Okay, the next category. I made so many predictions. Wow. The next category was release styles, like the type of products I thought we would see. I said medium coverage foundations, 
specifically because we did see so many skin tints prior. I thought, again, we were going to see the opposite. We were going to see the coverage level coming back up. And I do feel like the bulk of the foundation launches I saw in 2022 were medium coverage, though I don't feel like this year was as foundation heavy as I was expecting. I also said brown mascaras and brown liquid liners. Maybe this is just because that's what I wanted to see, but unfortunately, we did not. Uh, I, I want this in 2023. Makeup brands, bring us more brown mascaras. Today, I'm wearing the CoverGirl Flourish Mascara in brown. That is one of the few browns out there. I mean, there are a couple, but I want to see more of that. Um, brown liquid liner. Fenty has a really great one. This is my favorite one. Their fly liner in, in big truffle, but I, I wanted to see that a little bit more this year. I also said bronzers. I said it was going to be the year of bronzers, and it was, but I feel like it was the year of cream bronzers, and I was expecting it to be the year of powder bronzers. So that one I'm gonna say was half right. I do feel like every single brand was coming out with a cream bronzer. That's why I did a best and worst cream bronzers video a few weeks ago. That one I'm gonna say was half right, half wrong. Um, I said Milani would come out with a cream bronzer in a pan. They didn't, but I, I still want them to. That would I think they would nail it. But if they're gonna do that, I want them to do a really great shade range, which we have not seen with their other bronzer. So Milani, please bring us that in 2023. I said we would see more multi-use products or products that almost combined two categories, similar to how Bare Minerals launched a bronzer, which was supposed to be half bronzer, half blush, though I would say it's all blush, no bronzer. I don't feel like we saw too many like all-in-one products like that. I think it would have made a lot of sense because it, I feel like makeup trends in the last few years have gone to something more simple, something a bit easy, less products, but I didn't necessarily see a lot of all-in-one products like that. I said we would see more single eyeshadows and I feel like we did. And I'm not referring to a magnetic pan that you put into a palette. I'm talking about something like a single pot eyeshadow, which I feel like we did see more of slash, even if they weren't released as much this year, I do feel like that style of product gained popularity. Like I was seeing older formulations of single eyeshadows go viral again, like Urban Decay Space Cowboy, which you know, I've loved for years. I said we would see a style of packaging that I described in the video as minimal colorful. And some specific brands I described that have that type of packaging were Tower 28 and Kosas. Yeah, I feel like that is just the packaging style of the moment, the minimal colorful look. Like, what is that new brand at Sephora? Hold on. Simi Haze. Like, I feel like they are the epitome of that min minimal colorful look. I feel like every new brand was doing that type of packaging. Okay, brand specific predictions. I said Natasha Denona would do a pastel palette. And they did. I I mentioned a few other predictions from the brand, though these other ones I made specifically because I looked up the trademarks and I knew they were coming. So we'll talk about them though. I said we would see the mini crush palette around Valentine's Day, which we did. I mentioned that we would see a retro glam, which we did. Um, again, those that's because I knew that they, those were already trademarked by the brand. I said that Dyson would come out with more attachments for the air wrap, which they did. They actually came out with a new version of the air wrap with some new attachments that go like different directions. We also saw them launch new attachments for the supersonic. And I feel like this kind of falls into the theme of Dyson, just really expanding more into hair care, which we have seen that they said they're going to continue to do. I said we would see eyeshadows from Kosas. We didn't. I was picturing like an eyeshadow palette or eyeshadow sticks. Right now they have their liquid shadows that they reformulated last year that I don't really like. So I feel like in 2023, Kosas, maybe like an individual shadow in a pot, like a cream eyeshadow. I feel like that would be a, a great launch from the brand. Some specific collaborations I thought we would see again. I said that ColourPop would do a Toy Story movie because they were coming out with a Buzz Lightyear movie this year. We did not see that, but I did say we would see a third Hocus Pocus collection because the new Hocus Pocus came out this year. We did see that collection. I mean, that one 
I'm not even going to pat myself on the back for it. That is so predictable. They've done a Hocus Pocus collection the last two years. Of course, they're going to do another one when there's a new movie. I also mentioned a few launches from Urban Decay that I saw because I saw the trademarks. So first, I saw trademarks for Urban Decay, Foxy Skin, not Skin, <laughs> Sin and Half Baked, which were the mini palettes they came out with this year. So that one did happen. I also mentioned trademarks for Naked Playback and Naked Fireball. I never saw these. If I'm missing something, let me know. I was trying to look them up before this video. We never saw that, though I will say it makes sense because Naked Fireball was not trademarked until the middle of November 2021. So that might be something we see even next year. I also thought they would come out with some more brow products. They did not. So overall, I feel like more than half of my predictions came true, especially a lot of the like more general ones, which I guess those are maybe a little bit easier to predict, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little look back. It does have me very excited to create my predictions for next year. Let me know your makeup predictions that you think we'll see in 2023. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for the next day of Vlogmas. Bye.